Just a few days before Apple's March 25th event, Apple announced the new iPads, second gen AirPods, and a much needed spec bump for both the 4K iMac and the bigger 27 inch 5K iMac. So here's our first impression and comprehensive benchmarks of the 2019 4K iMac. Hey guys, Mark here from Apple Insider, and let's take a quick look at Apple's refreshed 21.5 inch 4K iMac and see what's changed and what kind of benchmark scores we can get out of this thing. Now, in terms of overall design, not much has changed, but internally, lots have. Looking at the iMac, everything about it looks familiar. The thick bezels around the display, the tapered slim design, it's the same iMac we've seen since its 2015 debut. You can now pick up the new 21.5 inch iMac with an 8th gen i3 quad core processor, an i5 6 core processor, processor or an i7 6 core processor which supports hyper threading which is really helpful for video creators and editors. Now the one we have here is the base configuration with a 3.6 gigahertz quad core i3 with 8 gigs of ram and a 5400 rpm 1 terabyte hard drive and it's also equipped with the amd radeon pro 555x graphics card with 2 gigs of vram and this one costs 12.99 before taxes. Now starting off with Geekbench, you can see that our machine got a single thread score of 4,819 and a multi-core score of 14,410, which is nearly identical in terms of performance as the base model Mac Mini. Now comparing that to the 2017 base model iMac with a 7th gen i5 processor, that one got a single score of 4450 and a multi-core score of 12817. Now even if it's an i3 processor, you're getting slightly better performance on the newer model. We also ran an OpenCL benchmark and we got a score of 52061. Now benchmarks are controversial, they're never a direct correlation to any individual's workflow, and they keep changing as computer power grows and paradigm shifts. Specifically in Apple Insider stalwart Cinebench now has an R20 version, completely incompatible with results from the R15 version. The R20 version has increased the workload complexity, increased the memory use, and adapted the latest rendering engine from Cinema 4D R20, which ultimately will give us much better and accurate results. Now in our testing, the iMac 4K posted a CPU score of 1472, which is not bad at all at this price point. Now for comparison, my 2018 MacBook Pro with a 6 core i7 processor posted a CPU score of 2396, which is only about 1.6 times higher than the 4K iMac. Now firing up Unigen Heaven, which is a gaming benchmark, with everything set to default and quality and medium, we decided to run this test several times to find out how the Radeon 555X performs under load. And as you can see from the the results, the 4K iMac got a score of 749 and an average frames per second of 29.7 with a max frames per second of 56.6. Now of course you can opt in to pay $200 more and get a better processor and graphics card or go bigger with the higher end Vega 20 graphics card if you're looking for something with a bit more power. When it comes to Blackmagic's disk speed test, the 1299 base 4K iMac tops out at around 100 megabytes per second for both its read and write speeds thanks to that 5400 RPM hard drive. You can opt in to upgrade to that 1TB Fusion Drive for $100 extra and get slightly better performance, or spend an extra $200 and get a 256GB SSD which will drastically improve your iMac's performance. Now, if you're a content creator and you're curious about Final Cut Pro 10's performance, I edited a 5-minute 4K H.264 footage that was shot on my Fuji X-T3, added color correction, adjusted the saturation and contrast. Now, we exported the same file several times with background rendering on and off, and with it on, we got an exported file around 3 minutes to 3 and a half minutes, and with background rendering off, it exported the video around 3 minutes and 45 seconds to 4 minutes and 15 seconds. Now, I personally wouldn't recommend editing anything higher than 1080p on this base model iMac because 4K playback stutters from time to time, but if you're looking to edit and put together a quick family video of some sort, you can do that with no issues on this base model iMac. So that's the new 4K iMac. If you want to see how the new 27 inch 5K iMac perform in terms of benchmarks and want to hear Andrew's impression, make sure to check out the iCard banner or the link in the description below to watch that video. Now we're still doing more tests than using the iMac as a whole, but our full review of the new 2019 iMacs are coming soon, and if there's anything you want specifically covered, sound off in the comments down below, and we'll see you in the next one. Enjoy that video? Click like and press on that subscribe button. Be sure to check out the Apple Insider price guide that has the best deals on Apple devices and is updated daily. Follow us on social media, and we'll see you guys in the next video.